I toured with Frank Sinatra for 14 years in 45, 50 cities a year for 14 years. It's an experience that's hard to describe, especially as a comedian being on stage with Frank Sinatra. I've always made the analogy that it was like a, a, I was an altar boy when I was a kid growing up. So it's like an altar boy serving mass for the Pope. Because this, if you played a word association game with me when I was growing up in Harvey, Illinois, if you said tall, I'd say short, you say black, I'd say white. If you said show business, I said Frank Sinatra, Sammy Davis yeah. Jr. and Dean Martin. I thought that was the epitome of show business. You know, that, that, that not only because of their extraordinary talent, but uh, their charisma on stage and the love they had for one another, and most important, the love they had for the business that, that I'm in, show business. And, and I, so that's, being with Frank Sinatra was, again, like an altar boy serving mass for the Pope. But I'll never forget the first year that I toured with him, I was in awe of everything I saw around him, you know. Uh, and we were in New York, they were honoring his wife, Barbara Sinatra, at the Waldorf Astoria. And the Italians have a curse with us all of our lives, that people always think that somewhere in our family, someone's in the mafia. And we're always getting connected with the mafia. And there was 115 movies made about Italians. 108 of them were about the mafia, and seven were positive. So we, we always have to live with that mafia thing. So, and turning with Frank, it didn't help any because he already had this huge reputation, right? So now I'm at the Waldorf Astoria, and I'm at this party. They're going to honor Barbara Sinatra. And on the dais is uh, Lee Iacocca, Henry Kissinger, uh, Donald Trump back in the day, and uh, uh, Dean Martin, uh, Don Rickles, Frank Sinatra. And, and me. It was like, guess who doesn't belong in this picture, you know. So I'm at this cocktail party, and I'm looking at all these people, the mayor of New York and Gregory Peck and Kirk Douglas, and I'm thinking, boy, you're a long way from Harvey, Illinois. This is really something. And Frank Sinatra starts talking to me about a gig we're going to be doing at Garden State Art Center. And at that very moment, along comes Henry Kissinger, and he walks up and he said, Francis, how are you? He said, Dr. Kissinger, it's nice to see you again. He said, this is Tom Dreesen, a comedian who's touring with me now. And I remember Kissinger took his fist like this and he tapped me on the shoulder. He said, I've seen you on the Johnny Carson show. You're a funny lad. And I went, wow, Henry Kissinger watches The Tonight Show? Wow. I'm, now, meanwhile, Sinatra turns around and he's talking to Donald Trump and I'm hung out there with Henry Kissinger. And I want to say something profound to let him know I know a little bit about world affairs because I watch Nightline every night. You know? So I said, Dr. Kissinger, um, I was watching a Nightline and this thing about the West Bank, and just then the band leader, Lee Castle, an Italian guy, walked by and he said to Kissinger, excuse me, he said, Tommy, did you hear about Tony from Milwaukee? The feds busted him, he got two years. <laughs> I don't know who he's talking about. No, I'm, I, I said, and Henley Heckler's all my life, I said, oh yeah? <laughs> That's all I can think of, you know. Now, he walks away and Kissinger's looking at me like I'm Al Capone now, you know. And all I could think of, I said to Kissinger, you know how them feds are. <laughs> <laughs> so now later on, <laughs> later on, I go to dinner with Frank, and he says to me, what were you and Kissinger talking about? It seemed like it was very interesting. And we went to a little place called Rocky Lee's in New York, and we're having dinner. And I said, Frank, you ain't going to believe what Lee said to me. And I tell him the story. And, and I said, because I went after Lee afterward. And I said, Lee, who the hell were you talking about? He said, Tony from Milwaukee, Tony Maki, he books the Italian Fest. I said, I met him one time in my life. I walked off stage, he handed me a check. He said, well, I thought you'd want to know. I said, didn't you see who I was talking to? You wonder why everybody thinks Italians are all connected to the mob, you know. So Frank says to me, I know, Tommy, he said, those guys don't get it. He said, years ago, I was in Syracuse, New York. I'm sitting on the dais with the governor of New York. And in the audience are all these construction companies and wise guys, and, and, uh, and it's a political night. And he said, I'm ha we're having our salad just before dinner on the dais, and one of the guys, one of these wise guys, this, I don't know why people do that. Whenever the Italians, they talk about a wise guy, you know, they, 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 they'd always do that. They'd say, who's coming tonight? There's 10 of the guys are going to sit down front. Are they, uh, yeah. They're, they're. <laughs> Anyhow, so now uh, Frank tells me, he said, he's sitting on this dais in Syracuse, New York, with the governor, and one of these guys comes up out of the audience and kneels down between Frank and the governor. He said, and he said to me, he said, Frank, I don't know if you heard or not, he said, and he named some name. Tony Stanucci died last night in the electric chair. And he looked at the governor and he said, this f wouldn't pardon him. <laughs> he said, Frank, what'd you do? He said, I fell off the chair. I just fell off the chair laughing. <laughs> Let's, uh, 